Spencer, I saw you that you were interviewing the best minds in the world. Someone like Tony Robbins, someone like Grant Cardone and the best minds in the world. I'm just obsessed. How do you reach to those guys at the beginning? Do you have any strategy from your podcast or networking strategy? See, it's not, Tony Robbins says it's not about resources, it's about resourcefulness. And so we wanted Tony to come on the show. And um, my friend Omar and I were like, how do we get him? What can we do to get Tony on the show? And I said, let's find his manager. And so we contacted his manager. Tony's going to be in Dubai. We'd heard about it. And that he was coming with Najahi. And Najahi was like, Spence, he won't do podcasts at all. So I'm really sorry. We can't, we can't get him on your podcast, even though we sponsor your podcast. I was like, okay, that's not good. So we got his manager. She was like, no. Then we got hold of his publicist and we sent her some flowers and then we sent her some cupcakes. <laughs> and she's like, uh, okay. I said, look, we just want an opportunity. She said, do me a favor, make me a video. I will give the video to the, the lady on his private jet, the stewardess on his private jet. I will ask her to play it. If he likes you, then maybe, maybe there's a chance. So we made this video, this one minute video. Tony, you said it's about resourcefulness, not resources. You're gonna be in Dubai. You can't let us down. You know, the whole world, uh, the whole Western world knows you. In Dubai, they need to know you and we wanna make sure we put you on that platform. So come on, Tony, how about it? Something like that, I can't remember. Yeah. The, the video somewhere. And he responded and he said, oh. yeah, I'll come. And he said, uh, his team said he's got 35 minutes. Mm -hmm. That's your interview. And we were in a studio and usually the studio would have four or five people in, but because Tony was coming, there were 20 people in there. <laughs> and I, I, they say, don't meet your heroes. I think that's rubbish. I met my hero that day and he was incredible. After the interview, he sat there on the edge of the little stage in the studio and he spoke one-to-one -one with everyone, did videos, did photos, um, did little lives. He did anything anybody wanted, he was happy to do. And it was beautiful to watch. And it, when I was experiencing that, I, it was one of the most special days that I've ever had. It really was, because he was just so cool. He then spoke at the event at the Coca-Cola Arena the next day. Uh, I went down to the stage, came over, gave me a hug, and it was just like in front of 10,000 people. I'm just like, it was just wonderful. And that, that's how he came on. We leveraged um, that relationship to get some other guests on there. And once you start to get some bigger names on there, you can then utilize that. And again, for me at that time, the podcast was all about personal development. It was the first year 18 months was personal development focused and so we wanted to get everybody that was in that space from gary vaynerchuk grant cardone and nick vojic <coughs> uh, marissa peer and all of the people that were in that kind of world of personal development um, we wanted on the show and we were able to do that you know that you <clears throat> are one of the biggest reasons that you inspired me to start this podcast, you remember when we were in Najahi mm -hmm. and you were in the stage, mm -hmm. and I got inspired by the speech that you have done for the, the podcast itself. And I'm still insisting to let our audience know what could be the benefit of any podcast mm -hmm. that they can start and what 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 can help them mm -hmm. if they can start their podcast. It's just, it's, I, I've, I, I don't get why people don't get it. For me, it's just like, <laughs> why don't you get this stuff, people? So if you have a podcast, you know, a lot, a lot of time people are like, I don't have an audience, I can't, I don't have mm -hmm. the facility, I don't have the space, uh, I don't have the technology. And what we're sitting in here with you that have built this podcast studio yourself. And, and, and I'm telling, going to tell you right now, this is, this is the example of action. You took the action. You've paid for all of this equipment that's sat here, lights, all this stuff that's going on. You've rented this space, I'm sure. You've spent money and you, you put your money where your mouth is. You took action. You've had to learn some new skills so that you can work the cameras and all that kind of stuff on the microphones. And that's what 99.999% of people that want a podcast will not do. That's just a fact. Now, does your podcast need a big audience? It does not, depending on what you do. Whatever your business is, whatever. So let's say you and I are hypnotists, okay? We do <laughs> hypnotherapy and we help people get over smoking or that, whatever it may be, mm. yeah? That, that's what we do, that's our business. This is the best prospecting tool in the world. So let's imagine we're hypnotists and we bring in the CEO or the CEOs of the biggest companies in Dubai. Mm -hmm. 
and we have a one-to-one -one conversation where they tell their story and they inspire our audience with their story, their struggles, their journey, how they became successful. And then we talk to them about the benefits of hypnotism as a corporate wellness tool in their company. That's part of the conversation. Don't sell them anything. Mm. We're just talking about it. That podcast then takes place. Two weeks later, we phone that guy up and say, hey, we'd love to buy you a coffee. We've got a couple of ideas we think might help you. Mm -hmm. He's going to have a coffee with you because he's been on your podcast. <laughs> you bonded, yeah? So we'll have that coffee. Mm -hmm. You go for the coffee and you say, look, I think we can help your company. I don't know how. Who's in charge of making these types of decisions? Now, let's say he says it's Fatima in charge of HR. Let's say he says that. Mm -hmm. Go talk to Fatima. He gives us Fatima's number. We call Fatima. Fatima, your CEO has told us we need to come and see you. Is she going to say no? <laughs> She's not going to say no, Definitely is she? Yeah. She's going to say yes. So she says, yes, come see me. We go see her. Look, we've been chatting to your CEO. We're really good friends. We've got this solution that can help your staff with staff retention or mind um, well wellness or, or mindful mindfulness or something. Yeah. <laughs> What we'd like to do is incorporate it into the business. And we don't know how yet. And what we'd love to do is trial it and see if we can make it work for your people. So is that something you'd be interested in exploring? You're in the middle of a sale. But you've got the CEO that's told her Absolutely. to talk to you. So if she makes a decision, he's already told her to talk to you. Now, that's that's a client. All because the CEO came on the podcast and you talked about that subject. And and your podcast could be about anything. There's a lady I helped I helped do a podcast recently. Um, she's a beautiful human being. Uh, I'm not going to give you a name because I need True. to respect her. Beautiful human being who's had some challenges with weight over the years. Mm -hmm. So she was slim. She put weight on. She had some surgery. She lost the weight. She put it on. And, and she wanted to run a podcast on eating disorders. And you know what? It was interesting because my initial reaction was eating disorders was people getting fat. But she educated me. She said, eating disorders don't affect people that just get fat. They affect people that don't eat at all, that lose weight, that have um, um, fear with food. This because it affects so many people. I said, okay, before you do it, go and ask your friends. So I want you to go and survey 25 mm -hmm. friends and say, I'm going to do a podcast on this subject. What do you think? And she went out and did that. She goes, I can't believe the response. Everyone said it'd be really interesting. So now you've got a lady that's that's gone through these challenges. You think about that network of people she's mm -hmm. going to build. If for no other reason to help support her on her journey, that starts. What then happens? Because it's such a big subject. You have the doctor's. Then you have the clinics that want to sponsor that type mm -hmm. of podcast. Then you have the hospitals. Then you have the psychiatrists. Then you have all of these people that want to be part of that because they feel they can either add some value or they can talk to that audience. That is a guaranteed money spinner. But like every business, it doesn't happen like that. It takes time, effort, energy, patience, dedication, perseverance, consistency to be able to turn that idea into a podcast, into a business. Question, um, what could be the conversion rate in inside the board? Because let's say that I have 10 prospects in case mm -hmm. uh, quality prospects. Mm -hmm. What could be the, the conversion rate in that case if I nourish my relationship? Okay, so let's let's talk about another industry. Let's take financial advice. Okay. okay? So you invite 10 CEOs on your podcast. And you talk financial advice and their journey with finance, their relationship with money and how they became successful, what they invest in, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Every one of those people will sit down and have a coffee with you afterwards. When you tell them about how well the podcast went, they'll have a coffee with you and maybe they'll become a client. But more importantly, they'll refer you to their staff. Mm -hmm. And again, it's the same thing. If the CEO refers us to John, who's the CMO, let's say, And you call John, John, your chairman's told me to get in touch with you. This is what we do for him. We'd love to talk to you about that. Then you've got a whole new audience of, uh, sorry, a whole new prospect list of mm -hmm. clients. Mm -hmm. So the conversion from 10 guests could be 100, could be 50, could be mm -hmm. 
Now, that depends on some other things, you know, what your skills are like, how good your podcast is, how how well you did it, how good you are as a financial advisor, and so on and so forth. So there's, there's lots of aspects to it. But if you beat on your craft and you focus on being the best you can be, your best version in every part of what you do, then what then happens is luck comes your way. It just, it's impossible not to get it. Wins come your way because wins always go to the persistent. They go to the consistent. They go to the people with systems and processes. They go to the positive energy people, the hardworking people. They always do. Okay. All of the people that fail in life, they never get luck. But they fail not because they're failures. They fail because they don't try. Or they tell themselves a story as to why they can't have something. And they sell themselves on that. Oh, they're brilliant salespeople at selling themselves (laughs) on why they shouldn't have something. And then they're terrible salespeople in their mind at selling others. With the whole inspiration that you give, if someone of the audience, he or she wants to start like a podcast from scratch, Mm -hmm. what could be the baby steps that you can give it to them right now? Why are you asking me? Why don't you tell them? (laughs) You've started a podcast from scratch recently, yeah? yeah? you, You give me this. When did you start? I started actually, uh, I had it like um, live broadcasting, streaming before, but you inspired me to start like a physical broadcast like this. Okay. Uh, I'm just, if I, if I can give an advice right now, I can give like, it's all about, you know, I can have my mobile, just I don't need to have fancy even cameras because some people that they have financial constraints, mm-hmm. I could have one mobile, mm-hmm. one tripod, mm-hmm. and I have small mics, mm-hmm. which will cost you nothing. Mm-hmm. And what I will do, the only resource that I will have, it's the time and the content bringing people into my podcast. Mm-hmm. This is what I can do. The interesting thing with that is that you don't actually need cameras because a lot of people listen to podcasts as opposed to watch. It's, only, it's almost a luxury to film it too. <laughs> but it is, you know, because you can do on your social media, you can do sound waves mm-hmm. that, that essentially are videos that pop up. They're sound wave videos. And then people can hear the audio. You put subtitles across the sound waves. People can read. So you don't actually need, you can use Anchor, which is Anchor an app on your thing. That's an easy one there. Get Anchor, get the microphone that's got the splitter. Mm-hmm. Okay, plugs into you, plugs into me. Okay, cable plugged into your phone. You actually could sit there. A great place to do a podcast is your car. <laughs> Sound. Mm. Acoustics are really good in the car. When you're parked in a car, the acoustics are really good. I and so, is it yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they're really good. Mm. And so, of course, you can film it. You can get a couple of GoPros and whatnot, but you don't, don't need to. Mm. You could literally put, you could sit in the back of a car together, mm. the armrest that comes down, put the, put the phone there, the anchor app there, have the microphone clipped to each of you, and you can have a conversation. And there is your podcast. It's an aspiring one. It's as easy as that. And so, of course, once we get going, we have kind of grander plans and we want it to be bigger and better and, you know, (laughs) lights and cameras and action. But it doesn't doesn't need to start there. It's a conversation between two or more people, sometimes actually one person. And that conversation is for other people to find value in it. Spencer, I do appreciate your time, really. You inspired me the second time. You inspired me the first time to do this podcast. And um, I wish you all the best. Keep inspiring millions of people. You impact in my life. And I wish you all the best in your life and your business. And hope you that we can meet again. Thank you so much. It's, can I say something before sure, we finish? Sure. Okay, before, yeah. I, 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 need, I need your audience to know, okay? You, you, you've done something special here. And you need to, and you need to be recognised for that, and I mean that okay. really seriously. Okay, I know it's hard to take compliments sometimes, but you've done something really special because you've taken some action, you developed this, and you're you're an intelligent guy, and you're going to grow this out to be what you want it to be. My advice is never stop. Okay, and if I can help you in any way with your podcast or podcast guests, then all you have to do is ask, because I'll gladly make introductions for you, because you've done what, as I said earlier, 99.9% of people won't do. And for that, I take my hat off. Thank you so much. (laughs) Thank you, Spencer. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.